Today's lesson, how to do scientific notation on your calculator. This is one of the most frustrating things in the world for me to teach because, frankly, no one listens to me and people get things wrong all the time because they don't know how to use scientific notation on their calculator. They do it their own way and they get it wrong. So, how do you put a number in? Introducing the E button. Locate that button on your calculator. Oh, what's that? You don't have a calculator? Well, I told you to bring a calculator every day. Not my problem. You should really have one. If you don't have one, go buy one. You should have your own calculator every day because different calculators are going to look different. You're not. You're going to learn how to use one calculator, then you're going to steal someone's other calculator and you won't know how to use it. It's really important that you learn how to do this on your calculator and always have that same calculator. Because I do not wish to teach you in the middle of a test how to use your calculator. I'm doing that now. I'd rather not do this again. So, the E button. The E button is going to look like one of these three things. It's either going to look like a double E, as in this old uh, <coughs> TI model. The E, E button, the scientific notation button is right here for that one. For uh, Casio, it generally shows up on the bottom, and it looks like an EXP right here. Or we have, uh, a lot of you are familiar with this one, this is the one that the math department uses. It's this button right here, this, I can't get it to focus, but right here, this times 10 to the N button right there. So please locate that on your calculator. That's what it is. That's where to find it. If you can't find it, I'm going to you know, probably pause the video here, make sure everyone in the room has found that button on their calculator. Those are all different labels, but they all do exactly the same thing. It takes the number that you just inputted, and then it hits, and then it puts in a times 10, whether it shows it or not, it puts it in, and then it waits for your exponent. It waits for your exponent. So, if I have, for example, 3.07 times 10 to the 4th, and I want to put that into my calculator, I'm going to hit 3.07. I am not going to hit times. I'm not. I'm just going to hit my E button. Put it in scientific notation. The 3.07, and now I'm saying, hey, I want this in scientific notation calculator, so I just hit the scientific notation button. And different calculators show it differently. This calculator puts a capital letter E there. Other calculators, um, if I were to use the math calculator, I hit 3.07. And whenever I hit this times 10 to the button, it comes up times 10 to the, so it's pretty obvious that they put that 10 in there, and it's waiting for that exponent. And on the old TIs, on the EEs over here, it's going to look like uh, 3.07, and then my EE button here in the, on this particular calculator shows, uh, doesn't show the 10 at all, it just shows the exponent. You can tell that I'm waiting for the exponent, so if I hit a 4 now, it shows up as the exponent. If I hit a 4 here, comes after the E. And if I hit a 4 here, it comes up as an exponent. Now, if you have this particular calculator, a lot of times it's confusing how to get out of exponent mode. On this one, you just hit the right button, and that gets you back down into regular mode. So, different calculators, different ways of getting there, and they'll all look different. But those are all the same number. Those are all 30,700 written in scientific notation. So make sure that you know what that looks like on your calculator. Similarly, when you get a number out, when you do a calculation and it shows the answer, it's going to show it in this format. If you have this calculator, it's not going to say times 10. You need to know that's times 10 to the fourth when it puts that little exponent up there. Um, and for this calculator, if you ever see a capital E, that means it's in scientific notation. Um, and so if I hit equals on all these, it will give me a decimal answer. As long as it fits on the screen, these will just these will spit out decimal answers when you hit equal. So, <clears throat> so now let's see. Um, there are other ways people can put these in, but they involve knowing what you are doing, and I don't trust uh, that that's the best way to teach you how to do it. So let's say that I want to divide two numbers. I want to divide 
3.07 times 10 to the 4th divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 3rd. And I want to know what that number is. Well, for uh, the Casio model and the uh, TI model, these are actually both very easy things to do. You can just put the first number in, 3.07 times 10 to the 4th, uh, 3.07 times 10 to the 4th. By the way, some models of the TI, you have to actually hit the second function to get to the EE, to get to the scientific notation. I find that annoying. Um, but anyhow, you have that. Now you hit divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative third. Do that over here, divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative third. And I hit equal on both of those, and I get the same number. That's good. That's good. I got the same number. Um, notice that I didn't put in parentheses. Probably should have, but on these calculators, when you're in scientific notation, it knows that you're in scientific notation, and it groups those together like you're thinking. However, with the math department calculator, this is not the case. They're very particular about orders of operation on here. So if we put that same number in, 3.07 times 10 to the 4th, divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 3rd, this is not going to give you the same answer. Notice that our number back here was in the one, one, two, three, one, two, like 4.9 million. Yeah, it's in the almost 5 million, whereas this number is almost 5. So we got a difference of about a factor of a million. And this calculator did the right thing, and this calculator did the right thing. They're just kind of programmed to handle these numbers in different ways. This one uses the strict mathematical interpretation that we are just, because uh, you didn't put any parentheses in there. Um, let's. <clears throat> the difference is that this automatically groups scientific notation numbers, uh, the, kind of puts the parentheses in here when you use scientific notation, and this one doesn't. If you do the same calculation without parentheses, notice that we're taking 3.07, we're then multiplying it by 10 to the 4th, we're then dividing it by 6.2, and then we're taking that answer and taking it times 10 to the negative third. And that's a different answer than if we divide by that whole group. You're going to uh, get a significantly different answer. So if you have this calculator, you better make sure to always use parentheses. I know your math teachers say to always use your parentheses, and that's not bad advice. It's just that these other calculators are uh, smart enough with grouping scientific notation numbers that you don't have to, although it never hurts to put them in parentheses. So uh, go ahead and do a few divided by. Now this matters in dividing. It's when you're dividing. When you're dividing scientific notation numbers, you either got to have kind of calculator that can handle it easily, or you've got to make sure to always put your parentheses in. And that's something that is going to come up a lot. So you better learn how to do it.